The regional news. There have been more disturbances on Tyneside, this time in the west end of Newcastle, ten miles from the scene of Monday night's riots on the Meadowell estate in North Shields. Derelict houses, a pub and cars were set on fire. Firemen were stoned and fire engines damaged. And youths in a stolen car added to the chaos, doing stunts in front of built burning buildings. Malcolm herdman has been on the streets of Tyneside. Trouble flared as darkness fell in the west end of Newcastle and crowds of youths gathered on the city's Elswick Road. A van was overturned in the middle of the road and set alight as a blaze took hold of a boarded up pub nearby. Firemen who arrived to put out the blaze were beaten back by a crowd of around 300 youths. Many of them stood and watched as a pair of joyriders wearing ski masks arrived at the scene and performed a display of so-called hotting, doing handbrake turns in the middle of the road. Some of the bystanders continued to throw rocks and stones at the speeding vehicle as it swerved backwards and forwards, narrowly missing some members of the crowd. At the moment, the Dodds Arms in Elswick Road, a derelict pub is well ablaze. The police are cordoning off the area. The fire brigade moved in earlier to try to fight the blaze, but they were beaten back by crowds of youths who threw stones at the fire engines. They say they're now waiting for police reinforcements to arrive before they can move in to put out the fire. The, there's an obstruction in the middle of the road. It could be a bus or a large truck involved in fire. It's blocked the road. The Dodds Arms is well alight. Uh, there's approximately two to three hundred youths throwing missiles, bricks, petrol bombs, etc. at the appliances. The fire brigade have attended 25 incidents in the west end of the city. Derelict houses, shops and cars have been set alight. This fire is in Buckingham Street near the Scottish Newcastle Brewery. Because of the number of fires on Elswick Road, police have diverted westbound traffic at Bentinck Road and fire engines from all over the area have been brought in. Police cover has been provided for the emergency services attending incidents. The police are responding to and monitoring reports of youths gathering in the west end of the city. So far there have been five arrests. The fire brigade say all fires are now under control and there have been no new reports of trouble for some time. Meanwhile, 13 people have appeared in court at North Shields, charged with offences following Monday's riot on the Meadowell estate. And that's the end of this news bulletin. And on their underlying causes. At the height of last night's disturbance in Ellswick, stolen cars are put through handbrake turns. For the third night, the Northumbria police waited some time before entering Ellswick's housing estates. It appears to be a new tactic. A long way from the intensive riot patrols of Toxteth or Brixton a decade ago, today a local fire chief defended the police approach. In the very early stages when we had the fire at the disused pub, it's fair to say that the, the police weren't in attendance at that time but they were very, very quickly. And although we had to withdraw from that incident, the police did back us up very, very quickly, and then we were able to go in and deal with it. Indeed, some estates became virtual no-go areas. Unescorted fire engines were stoned by rioters, two so badly damaged they had to return to station. As one fireman gave an interview, a colleague was hit by falling masonry. He sustained injuries to both legs. Ellswick, Scotswood and Benwell, three areas affected by last night's trouble, were quiet today with few police about. In the day after the night before, it was time for political condemnations. Well, the preliminary reports I've had of the events in Newcastle suggest that it was premeditated violence. There is no excuse for that. There can be no reason for it that is remotely acceptable to anyone. I believe there are some arrests, I believe the police did magnificently last evening, and this sort of behaviour just cannot be tolerated and will not be tolerated. Everyone knows that the root cause is social deprivation. That doesn't justify it. It doesn't mean that it's right, it doesn't mean it's forgivable, it doesn't mean the police shouldn't take a tough line. But we ought to act now to stop this happening next summer, the summer after and the summer after that. The Chief Constable of Northumbria Police said last night's riot was totally different to Monday's contained arson and looting that took place over a small area in the Meadow Well Estate, leaving severe damage to one small area.
Last night's disturbance began in Ellswick, a housing area to the west of Newcastle city centre. It happened as large numbers of riot policemen were deployed over 10 miles east on the Meadow Well estate in North Shields to counter possible rioting there. As night fell, a derelict pub was set ablaze on Ellswick Road. There then followed over 30 fires involving cars and empty buildings. In Oakfield Gardens and Cambridge Street, a number of cars were burned. There were fires in Bentick Road. The disturbances were extremely spread out. Diggers moved in this morning to clear up after the fires. Both Ellswick and Benwell are due for large government grants as part of Michael Heseltine's City Challenge scheme. The same Michael Heseltine who went to Liverpool a decade ago after the Toxteth riots to launch initiatives to regenerate inner cities. Ten years on and here we are again, riots from Cardiff and Oxford to Tyneside. But are the present disturbances any different to those of 1981? I think it would, would have been a mistake to explain uh, the pattern then, purely and simply in terms of the ethnic factor. I think deprivation is the common factor in all of these cases. What is it that creates groups of people who take their fun in the form of attacking the police, burning buildings, destroying cars, attacking firemen? I think the underlying cause of the disorders is the same as the underlying cause of the disorders in the early 80s, and that is the way that economic and social policies have created an underclass of young people who see themselves, indeed are, excluded long term from full involvement in economic and social life. The government dismisses suggestions that its own policies may be a factor, and the police speak of ignorant, stupid criminals whilst avoiding talking of issues like unemployment. But from Ellswick itself, various explanations. They stop doing this if the police stop hassling them. That's when they stop doing this. But everybody's unemployed around here. They're all out trying to make some money even things like that and they're just all against the police. Doing where I live, they run the room nearly all night. Doesn't matter what time you look, you'll see them flying the room down there. There was a little in say last night, half past twelve, like that. For half of them what choice? Have they got half of them didn't get any dole money on out? They've got no other choice, they can't even feed. You know what I mean? They've got to survive, they've got to live. Meanwhile in Ellswick the police are keeping out of the way hoping their tactics will continue to avoid serious injury and hoping for some cold wet weather. Alex Thompson